thank you, Sister Gladys. Thank you, good. Thank you so much. The Lord's Supper. So uh, this is what we call the, the miracle meal. We, we do this once um, at the beginning of every month just to remember um, the, the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus made before, um, before and after he went to the cross. I'm going to uh, read our, our scripture for the Lord's Supper. Matthew 26, verses 26 28. And this is what it says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat it. This is my body. I just want to pause right here and say, thank you, Jesus. It was your body that was proof for our sins. It was broken for our sicknesses. The chance of our peace was upon you, Lord. We say thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. So um, if you have your body, hold it up. Um, and I'm just going to declare so us. Thank you, Jesus, that your flesh is true food. Yes. Thank you. Not just your broken body, but it's also symbolic of the word. When we consume your word, when we're consuming uh, your flesh, we remind ourselves uh, that your body was broken. It was bruised for our sin, was broken for our sicknesses, and we receive your healing power right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the bread of life. Your body is life to our bones, and we say thank you right now. Go ahead and take, uh, take part of the, the Lord's body. Verse 27 says, Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. I don't drink just yet because I want to remind us all that the blood of Jesus is symbolic of the covenant between us and the Father. Yes. It was poured out for the forgiveness of sins, past, present, and future. Now by his stripes, we are healed. But just remember, it's not just for the forgiveness of sins. John 6, 55 says, my blood is real drink. This is Jesus talking to us. He says, my blood is real drink. So I believe this is also reminding us that we need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So right now, just hold your, hold your blood up right now and say, I'm just, I'm just going to declare this over. Thank you, Lord, for your son's blood. Yes. It's a source of healing for our bones. Yes. And Holy Spirit, we invite you into our hearts and into our homes mm -hmm. right now in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. take, take part in the Lord's blood. Thank you, Father, for your miracle meal. Lord. We thank you that we are experiencing healing in any part of our bodies, inside and out, right now, that needs to be healed. Father, we, we, we invite you to permeate every part of our heart that is broken. We, we receive that healing right now in the name of Jesus. If you agree with that, say amen with me. Amen. 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 So I'm going to move into our message for this morning. And I, I believe this... This, this word is inspired by God. I've been sitting on this one for about a year. If you're taking notes here, if you're live with me on the prayer line, or if you're tuning in on Facebook, I, I invite you to take notes. Uh, the title of our message this morning is Peace on Demand. I'm going to say that again. Peace on Demand. I'm sure there's a word in there that you can recognize. The word on demand. I'm going to get to that in a minute. I believe you can't put a premium on peace, especially in the middle of a pandemic. This fact means that peace is priceless. Is that? Sorry, flip your phone around so they can so the speakers are closer to you. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to say that again. You can't put a premium on peace, especially in a pandemic. Peace is priceless, y'all. The Bible defines peace as a state of tranquility. I'm just reading straight off my notes here real quick. So security, safety, prosperity. The tranquil state, peace is the tranquil state of the soul, assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and content with this earthly lot of whatsoever sort that is. So first thing I want you to understand is peace is only accessible through Christ. That's right. Yes. Amen. Yes. See, Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, he will keep those in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on him. So the reason we have faith in God the Father is because we first place our faith in the resurrection of God the Son. Amen. Amen. 
also characterized by contentment. See, I'm content, but I'm not complacent. I'm okay with where I am, but I know I'm not where I'm going. See, this, this pandemic that we're in the middle of, it's not going to last forever. So don't get complacent and think we're going to be here forever. No, it's, it's not going to be this way uh, five years from now, ten years from now. We don't know how long it's going to last, but we know it's not going to last. Amen. Amen. That's right. So I'm in a state of peace. Like Paul said, I'm in a state of peace whether I'm well hungry or fed, whether my kids are acting good or acting bad, whether my marriage is going great or whether it's not. That peace, we're all in search of that peace. And I think we're always tap dancing around it. But today I, I want us to figure out how we get to that perfect peace. See, contentment comes when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yeah. See, when you're content, you're not going to worry about what, what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink. You're not worried about whether your bank account is going to have money in it or not because you know that the Lord has his hand all over your life. Yeah. See, we need peace. We need peace the way Black Panther's available on Netflix or on Disney+. Plus. See, I, I, I watch a lot of TV with my wife. We watch TV with food. But our, our favorite shows, they're available on demand. And that's the way we need peace. We need peace on demand. And I, I kind of went to Google and I Googled what does on demand mean. So on demand simply means as soon as or whenever required. I think that's a perfect definition for peace. We need that peace, not, not in a moment when we're in a panic, we just need it daily. Because when you wake up, if you got kids, they're gonna be there, so you need to be in a constant state of peace, right? <laughs> so the parents, am, am I in the room with the parents? Again, Isaiah 26 verse three says, God will keep the mind that is dependent on him in perfect peace because it is trusting in him. Perfect peace, if you're taking notes, perfect peace is accessible when we tune our human minds to God's spiritual realities. So our scripture for this morning, our, our, our text that we're going we're gonna to stay in this morning is Philippians chapter 4. We're going to read verses 4 through 7. I give y'all a chance to turn there while I turn there myself. I want to make sure that we all stay on the same page. Again, that's Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Verse 4 says this Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. So, Paul said the word rejoice twice there. I think he meant that. Would y'all agree? Yeah. Yes. I think he meant that when he said it twice. Anytime you see something twice in the Bible, they meant it. They meant what they said. Rejoice means to be glad, to be well. But when I hear it, I think be joyful, be full of joy. See, joy isn't the same as happiness. See, when we think of joy, sometimes we think of happiness. We think of um, when, when things are going well, I'm up here, but... When, when things aren't going so well, I'm down here. That's not joy, that's happiness. Joy doesn't mean your emotions are up and down. Joy is a state of being. And see, Paul didn't write rejoice when your bank account has all the money in the world. He didn't say rejoice when your kids are acting perfect, when your wife isn't getting on your nerves. Mine doesn't. But he, he didn't say you rejoice when, when life is treating you well. He said, no, rejoice always. And he didn't just say rejoice. He said rejoice when? Where? In the Lord. In the Lord. It's important here to look at what Paul didn't say. Paul didn't say rejoice in the fact that you got a good job. Paul didn't say rejoice that you have the job that you want. He didn't say rejoice that you're not stuck inside in the middle of a global pandemic and that you can go back to school and enjoy uh, the luxury of being with your friends. Because right. I got some teenagers in the room and I want y'all to hear me. It's not gonna be like this always, but if you rejoice when things are going well, you won't rejoice when they're not. Because right. Mm -hmm. right. see, Paul knew that the location of your joy determines the longevity of your strength. Um, and if you need a reference for that, go to Nehemiah chapter eight, verse 10 in your spare time. The joy of the Lord 
is your strength. Yeah, that's right. Yes. And see, Paul didn't tell us. Well, he actually didn't tell us how long to rejoice. It, what, what, what did he say? How, how long did he say you rejoice? When you don't feel it. Sometimes. <laughs> when you feel like it. No, I'm talking about my kid, I got four. I went from <laughs> zero to four in a year. He didn't say when you wake up in the morning feeling good. He said rejoice in the Lord always. Yes, glory to God. Because see, Paul knew that when you rejoice in the Lord at all times, mm -hmm. like David knew, Come on. when you rejoice in the Lord at all times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you'll rejoice in the Lord in hard times. Yes. See, if you want peace on demand, if you want peace when you need it, you got to remember to rejoice. Yes. See, the best thing you can do for your spirit, your soul, and your body is to feed your spirit instead of feeding your flesh all the time. Come on. That's right. You've got to feed your spirit the way you feed your human body. And if you're going to feed your body three times a day, why wouldn't you do that for your spirit? I would encourage anybody listening to this, if you're on Facebook, on the prayer line, wherever, I would encourage you to carve out some time during your day to rejoice. And I, I mean do it intentionally. Because the worst thing you, you can do is wake up and go straight to social media, go straight to the news. Turn that stuff off and feed your spirit, ah. and you'll see your joy go up yeah. and your worry go down. I'm gonna keep moving. Verse 5 of Philippians 4, Philippians 4 5. It says, Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. And if you'll allow me to, y'all, for a few seconds, I want to go to the back of the text. The Lord is near. The Bible says that He's a very present help. In the time of trouble, the Lord is near. He's accessible to every single believer and non-believer, if we're honest. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, we think the presence of God is only for the believers. It's for the non-believers, too, because he wants them to come into fellowship with him as well. See, I was free. So, the Lord is near. As Christians, as believers, we are not to be seen as easily angered or foolish but rather as reasonable, wise people who can handle the difficulties of life. What does this have to do with peace? I'm glad you asked. Do not let what you're dealing with cause you to take your eyes off of Jesus, who is, as the Bible describes him, the prince of yeah. peace. Yes, that's good. Right. Gotta remember, he's a very present help yeah. in the time of trouble. Not when there's not trouble. He said, I'm in the trouble with you. You've got to fix your focus and remember that God is with you. You won't get off in emotion and into your feelings. And so the part about letting your graciousness be known to everyone. Don't let what you're going through, don't let the pandemic cause you to treat people like crap. Yeah. That's right. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. 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 Don't get off into emotion and start treating people any kind of way because that's going to mess with your peace as well. That's going to cause you to be in a state of chaos because you're worried about if they're going to get you back for what you said to them last week or if your, your child is going to be mad at you because you gave them a spanking or if your wife's going to be mad because you left the toilet seat up because you were mad at them. Not saying I did that, but let your graciousness, your gentleness be known to everyone. But the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you keep your eyes, again, stayed on him. Because we're trying to have that peace, like I said, on demand. Don't forget who's with you. He's a very present help. I'm going to keep saying that. In the time of trouble. Did y'all know that Jesus' name, Emmanuel, meant God with us? He said he would never leave you or forsake you, right? So when, I believe it was intentional that Jesus' name is Emmanuel. It's God with us. Mm -hmm. We don't have to we don't have to ask Jesus to come by here. He's already with He's already you. With us. Amen. Glory. And so my encouragement to you at this point, as you're trying to fix your focus, lean in to the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Wake up every day with an eager expectation. It's called apokaradokia. That's a Greek word that means to lean in with an earnest and eager expectation because the Lord is near and he's with you. And when you lean into his power, you'll be able to treat those around you well. And that's going to help you keep your peace. Because that's what we're talking about this morning. Peace on demand. I'm going to keep right on moving. We're almost done. Verse 6. And if you're just joining us, we're in Philippians chapter 4. I'm, I'm at verse 6 now. Don't worry about anything. I think we could preach on that right there, but I'm going to keep going. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Mm -hmm. Worry, I want y'all to listen. Worry is a sign that it's time to pray. Hey, I'm saying that. Hey, worry hey. is a sign that it's time to pray. Prayer is relational communication with God that seeks to draw resources from the spirit realm into physical reality. So when you pray, you're communing with the God who made you. And that word petition, don't get hung up on that and think that means you have to write it down and make it a legal document. Don't, no, don't think that. All petition means is to be specific. Get real with God. This is not one of the times for those God bless the world. That, don't, don't do that. This is not that time. This is not the time for one of those God bless the world prayers. Be specific. Yes, Lord. Tell God what you're dealing with because see, here's, here's what I discovered a long time ago. When you go and vent to other people, they're only able to give you their opinion. When you go and vent to people, they're going to tell you what they think about whatever it is that you're dealing with. But when you go and vent to God, he's going to speak victory back to you. And see, prayer can be frustrating. I understand it. Believe me, I do. When you're, believe, when you're believing that God's going to end this pandemic, like most of us are, some people don't really care if it ends. But me, I, I would love to be able to hug people in public again. But as we're praying for God to end this pandemic, it's frustrating. But when you do pray, do it with thanksgiving in your heart. Because see, prayer won't make the problem go away. I, I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there now. Prayer will not make your problem go away. Immediately. But I'm telling you this. It's going to put your problem in the hands of the one who has the power to end it. And see, when you pray and you're doing it with thanksgiving, you're not thanking God for the problem. That'd be weird. Thank you, Lord, for this problem. No, that's not what I'm telling you to do. I'm saying, give, give thanks to the God who you're inviting into the space to deal with your problems. Because again, if you want peace on demand, if that's what you really want, you're going to have to give God access to that part of your life and invite him in and allow him to speak to those parts of your, of your life that don't really make sense to you. So you've got to invite God into that specific problem and allow him to give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. So what can you expect when you rejoice in, focus on, and pray to the Lord? Verse 7, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it will guard your heart and your mind. This is verse 7, in Christ Jesus. See, it's called the peace that surpasses all understanding because you won't understand how you're able to have peace in the face of your problem. That's right. mm -hmm. mm. So to recap, peace on demand. Mm. Remember to rejoice. Thank you, Lord. Fix your focus and keep your eyes stayed on him. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of your faith. Yes. And pray with purpose. Mm -hmm. Glory. <laughs> Again, don't get one of those general, God, heal the world. Pray. Get real with God. Mm -hmm. Vent to God, not people. Go vent to God and let him speak victory back to you. That's right. Amen. And then once he's spoken victory back to you, you speak victory over your life because yes. you have the authority to do so. That's right. In the name of Jesus. Yes. And in closing, uh, maybe you're listening to this and your entire life is chaotic. Believe me, hey, I get it. I've been there. 
But the first step to God's peace is by entering into a relationship with him by placing your faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if that's you, I invite you to speak to someone. If that's you, put it in the chat. I, I need to receive Christ today. And someone monitoring our Facebook page will, will reach out to you. And they'll walk through the door of salvation with you. Because you, you are not meant to do this life alone. Maybe you're listening here like, I have come to the end of myself. And I need strength for the next moment. That makes you a candidate, candidate to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Yes. And again, if, if you're a candidate for, for that, you need that strength, you need that extra something. I know you're a natural person. You need the Holy Spirit to come be the super to your natural. That's right. Amen. So if that's you, if I, I invite you. If you're watching on Facebook or you're listening on the prayer line, contact someone. We have several leaders who know how to get you spirit-filled. Do not walk away from this message and, and not get the strength that you need to live for the next day. And if you're looking for a church home, hey, I think this is a pretty good one. I think Revealing Truth is a great place to, to connect with. If you're already connected with us, great. Invite more people to join us. But if you're looking for a church home, and you're, I'm going to go ahead and just put this out here. Spiritual tumbleweeds don't get fed. They don't have any roots. So I would encourage you, in the middle of this pandemic, get rooted somewhere. Because we've got several ministers and a pastor who loves you and wants to pray for you. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we, we say thank you, Lord, for illuminating your word for us this day. God, as we go into our week, Father, help us to remember to rejoice. Father, help us to remember to keep our eyes stayed on you. Father, help us to pray with purpose. Pray specific prayers. Help us to come into you and into your presence so that you can fill us with the reminder that you are taking care of it. You've already dealt with it. All we've got to do is open our mouth and speak your word over our problems, over our chaos, Father. right now for your Holy Spirit Holy Spirit we thank you for entering into our, our day into our lives we thank you for the, the sacrifice of Jesus we thank you for his, his body which was broken so that we might be made whole we thank you for his blood that not just covers us and heals us inside out it gives us access to the Holy Spirit. Lord, we honor you for what you've done and what you're doing this day. And you see your son in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, someone just told me that um, if you want to be uh, physically baptized, if you're watching this um, on Facebook or um, you're listening on the prayer line, we're going to be starting up um, baptisms uh, pretty soon. Um, uh, we're going to uh, say goodbye to Facebook so we can go ahead and take up our offering.